it. Today I'm going to show you how to make this really pretty bangle bracelet. Now for me, my bra bracelet looks kind of big and floppy simply because my hands are very large. So, and my wrists are not. They're small to average size. So, I have to make my bangles really big in order to fit over my hand. So it's not quite as neat and pretty looking as a little bangle for somebody with a normal hand would look. However, it turns out really pretty. This I'll show you how it slides on. I'll show you how to measure it for your hand and for your wrist. Now for me, because my hand is so big, it's really big on my wrist. So I personally would do the same stitch and put a clasp on it. And I might make another one and show how to do that too. But they turn out really pretty. This would be a really nice bracelet to make for Christmas. You could do this in red and blue, or red and blue, red and green. You could do every other bead red and green, or just two of them red and green, or whatever color you would like. They're very, very stackable, really cute bracelets. And um, I have the beads that you will need on my website, so I will post a link for that in the information box and so on and so forth. All that's in the video, but I just wanted you to see what it looks like, and it's really quite pretty. Let me take it off. It slides on and off very well. Just like that, and let's get close and show you the units. Very pretty. Okay. So let's go ahead and look and see what it takes to make this bracelet. Okay, for this project today, we will be using 8 11 and 15 seed beads. Mine are Toho. They're the galvanized permanent finish aluminum, which is a silver tone. Then we will be using some four millimeter round crystals, and I'm using Chinese crystal. This is a four millimeter round teal AB, and I do have these in several colors available on my website. In about a week, I'll have even more, but there are some available if you need some. I'll put a link in the description box and in the comments. Then we're going to be using some nanofill. This is 10 pound nanofill, and I'm using a size 12 beading needle. You will start by putting a wingspan of the nanofill on your needle and a wingspan is when you spread your arms out side to side like you're going to fly away measure from your fingertips the length of your first arm across your chest the length of the second arm and to your fingertips that is a wingspan now you will need to extend your fire line you can also use fire line in this uh, keep to a six pound or a four pound if you do that Six pound is stronger, four pound is thinner, and will be easier to sew with. But you can extend your nano fill or your fire line during this project, and you will need to. If you do not know how, I will have a link for a video that will show you how to do that in the description box beneath the video player. You'll also want something like a tape measure or I have this little piece of suede, something to measure around your hand so that you can get the length of your bangle. So I'm using this little piece of suede. I just cut it, I wrapped it around my hand and I just cut it to the length I need. So I'm going over my knuckles, I'm going over the widest part of my hand, and then I hold on to it and cut it. And then that way, when I make my length, I can measure it with my piece of suede. You can do it with a piece of string, yarn, a tape measure, or one of the soft little tape measures, and anything like that. So now that you know what we're going to be using, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, to start this tutorial, you pick up an 8 seed bead onto your needle, and then two 11 and an 8 and two 11 And pardon my fingernails, they need to be done. I, I am sorry. Haven't had time. So, this is what you should have. You should have two 11 or an 8 2 two 11 0s 8 2 11 0s just like that. And then we're going to grab a hold of these and bring them down to the end of the thread. You don't have to leave a long tail, but leave a couple inches to tie a knot with. Then we're going to go back up through the first 8 seed bead and we're going to pull our thread through. 
hold on to the tail, hold on to that 8 0, and just pull your thread around like this. <clears throat> now we're going to sew back through these beads two 11 0s at a time and one 8 0 at a time to retain the shape we want. It will goof up a little bit, but it helps retain it a little bit. So let's go through the first two 11 0s and hold on to your piece between your thumb and your finger and then go into the 8 0. And again, hold on to your piece between your thumb and your finger so that you can pull your thread through without totally destroying your little unit. Then go up into the next two 11 0 seed beads right here and put your thumb over it and pull. Right here, we are right where our tail thread and our working thread meet and we are going to tie a knot with the two threads. So just tie a knot, just a little simple overhand knot, and pull it down on that thread between the beads and tighten your piece. That's just going to hold the piece for us. If we don't do that, it's going to pull apart. So now this is what you should have, just like this. Now you're going to go into this first 80 seed bead. And the first couple units are a little harder because it's, there's not much to hold on to. But as you get going, it gets a little simpler. So just go into this 80 right here. And then you're going to pick up a 15 0 seed bead and one of your crystals and a 15 0. Like this. You're coming out of this side of the 8 -0. Let me get just a little bit closer. You're coming out of this side of the 8 -0. You're going to go across to the opposite 8 -0 and go into the same side. You're exiting on the other one, just like this. And put your thumb and your finger over it and pull the thread through gently until you can push that crystal right on top of the unit and just pull it down the best you can. Just like that. It's not going to be perfect yet. That's okay. Then you're going to pick up a 15 0 seed bead and you're going to go into the crystal. Just like this. Put your thumb over the top of it. Pull your thread through gently. This will allow you to keep your unit together nicely and tighten as you pull through. Just like that. And then you're going to pick up one more 15 0 seed bead. Now we need to go into the opposite side of the 8 0 we started in. So we started over here. We're going to go in on this side, right here. I'm going to put my thumb over it and pull this 15 0 down. And here is when you'll tighten everything so that it looks good. Your 15 nose aren't going to lay absolutely perfect, but you want to push them down so there's not a whole bunch of threadiness. There will be a little at this point. But arrange your 15 O's a little bit. Bring them up over the 8 O's and pull. And this is what you should have, just like this. Then we are going to, we're coming out of this 8 O seed bead right here. It's a little thread there. And we're going to go into the two 11 O's on the side of the unit, right here. And we're going to pull our thread through. Now, if you'd like to, you can trim down your tail a little bit if it's too long and it's in your way. I'm just going to leave mine for now. And we're going to make a second unit by picking up an 8 O seed bead and two 11 O's and an 8 O. We have two 11 O's on this unit already. That will be our second set of 11 O's that we will share. So we're coming out of this side of the 11 O's. We're going to go into the opposite side of the 11 O's. And having a size 12 needle is really going to help you with this. And using a smaller diameter of thread, that's why I recommend Nanofill. Oops. because sewing through these can be difficult if you do not have the right size thread and needle. Now, I've come through the 11 O's. 
I'm going to go through this 8 0 here by itself, put my thumb over it, pull. Then I'm going to go through these two 11 0s by themselves, put my thumb over it, hold it steady, pull. And then I am going to go right through this 8 0 here. Now we're going to put our crystal on after we go through this one and it's going to pull a little bit away from the previous unit but that's okay because as we come back around we'll tighten that so don't worry too much about it but do hold on to it like I'm doing as you pull your thread through so that you don't get too much separation and then pick up a 15-0 seed bead and a crystal and a 15-0 onto your needle just like this and then you're going to go straight across into the opposite 8 0 on the same side we're coming out of. So it will be the side closest to the previous unit. So I'm just going to turn this a little bit and go into that 8 0. And like I said, right now it's hard to hold on to, but you can see that I'm just going through that 8 0 right there, putting my thumb over it, and then gently pulling my thread. Now my tail is in the way, so I'm just going to move it and pull this thread until I can bring the crystal down on top of that little unit we made, just like that. Now I will pick up a 15-0 seed bead and I will go through the crystal here and put my thumb over it and pull. Give it a little tug so that you tighten everything up. It's not going to be perfectly tight right now. Just get it looking as decently as you can at this point. And then you're going to pick up a 15 O seed bead. You're going to go into the, the opposite side of the 8 0 from which you started. So you started on closest to the previous unit. Now you're going to go in on the far side right here. And that's going to anchor the other half of the crystal down. We're going to pull that 15-0 down into place. And then we have to sew through the two 11-0s between the two units. So I'm just going to turn it over so you can see. I'm going to go between these two or into these two 11-0s right here, right between my two units. I'm going to hold on to it and pull it through. Then I can just turn my unit back over, and you can do that without turning it over, but I want you to see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to go into this 8 -0. Now that's going to tighten everything up because it kind of pulls away until you go through those two 11 O's. Then as you come through this 8 -0, you can pull and tighten it. And then go up into the two 11 O's next to the 8 -0 you just came out of, the two on the side here. Hold on to your units so nothing messes up. Pull your thread through, give it a tiny tug, make sure everything looks good, and we'll begin another unit. So we'll pick up an 8-0, two 11-0s, and an 8 -0. And we'll go into the opposite side from which our thread is coming out of these two 11-0s and go up through them, just like this. Pull. And then I'm going to turn my unit just a little bit so I can sew until I get to this 8 0 here. So we're going to go through this one by itself to retain shape. And I'm just going to snip this off just a little so I don't keep catching it. Leave a little bit hanging out still, so just in case your knot slips or something. And then I'm going to go into these two 11 0s by themselves. Hold on to them. And then I am going to go into this 8 0 right here. So you sew all the way around until you get to the opposite 8 0 from which you start. And then you're going to pick up a 15 0 seed bead, a crystal, and a 15 0. Then you're going to go across to the opposite 8 0 from which you're coming out 
and go into the same side, which will be the side closest to the previous unit. And just pull your thread through. Bring that crystal down and give it a little tug. Now it's a little bit easier to manage because I've got a little bit more to hang on to. So the first two might be a tiny bit of a struggle, but as you get going, it gets a lot easier. Pick up a 15-0 seed bead, go into the crystal on this side now. Hold on to your crystal and pull. And just straighten things up. Pick up a 15-0, and then you're going to go into the opposite side of the 8-0 you started in. So we're going to go into this one here. And we're just going to pull that down into place, just like that. Then we're going to go up through these two 11 O's that we connected to right here. I'm going to hold on to all three units and pull so that I can make sure everything stays just the way I want it to, just like this. And then I'm going to go into this 8 here and then down into the two 11 O's. Let's do one more unit then we'll go to length. So pick up an 8 0 seed bead, two 11 0 seed beads, and an 8 0. Just like that. And you're coming out of this side of the two 11 0's. Let's go into the opposite side and pull these down. Now we're going to go into this 8 0 seed bead right here. I'm going to hold on to it with my thumb, pull down, and then go into these two 11 O's right here. And then I'm going to go into this 8 here. And I'm just going to pull my thread through. Then I'm going to pick up, and you see how I have a little separation here between the two units? That's okay. Don't worry about that too much because as you just sew back through, you can pull that together. So pick up a 15 0, a crystal. Come here, crystal. Oh, you little turkey. Come here. And a 15 0. And we're coming out of this side, closest to the previous unit. We're going to go into the opposite 8 into the side closest to the previous unit. And we're just going to pull the thread through. Just like that. Then we'll pick up a 15 0 go into the crystal again, here, hold on to it. Pull your thread, pick up a 15 0, and go into the opposite side of the 8 0 from which you started here, and I'm going to hold on to it. And now, as I go through these two 15 0s, I can tighten everything up. So, or 15 0s, excuse me, 11 0s. The two 11 0s between the two units, the one we've connected to. I'm just going to pull this through and pull it down and everything gets cinched together and looks good and then we're going to go through the 8 here up through the two 11 O's. Now we're going to go to, go to length. Everybody's going to use a different amount of beads and they're going to use a different length. So. What we're going to do is I showed you in the beginning that I have a little piece of leather that I previously cut. And you can grab anything, a piece of yarn, whatever you want. I'm going to get one that I didn't cut yet. And I'm just going to put my thumb behind my hand, go around the biggest part of my hand, which is my knuckles basically, and I am going to measure that. Just like that, loosely, not tightly, and then I can cut that right there and I will have the length. You can then either measure it or you can just compare your piece to that length. So I would just, if I was going to do this, I would cut it, but I already cut one. 
So now what I will do is I will just continue making my piece until I've made one this length. And we'll be back. Okay, so as you can see, I've gone to length. I've left it just a hair short of what I cut. And that is because I'm going to be adding one more unit in connecting the two ends together to make our mangle. Now mine is really long and I've used a lot of beads simply because of the fact that I have a really big hand. I don't make a lot of bangles because in order to have my bangle go over my hand, I have to make it really big and then it's huge on my wrist. But people like bangles, so I'm showing you how to make one. And if you have a small hand, it'll work better. And if not, you can just go to your regular length, leave it about a half, an inch short, and put a clasp on here. But otherwise, if you want to make a bangle, then you are just going to go to the length that you cut, that you measured previously, with your piece of string or whatever you're using, your tape measure, whatever. Now, I've gone... I've made my last unit here, and I'm coming out of my 11-0 seed beads. I'm going to grab the other end of my bracelet, and I'm going to make sure that as I connect, I'm going to connect them without any twists in my bracelet. So I'm going to lay it kind of like this so that I know I have it the right way. I've cut my tail down pretty short. I still didn't cut it completely off, but it's pretty short so I can keep it out of my way. You can probably go ahead and cut it down more if you'd like, but I'd like to melt mine down, so I'm going to leave it like that. Now what we have to do is we have to connect this unit to this unit, and in the process we'll create another unit. However, our units all have two 11 O's and two 8 O's, in. so we have two 11 O's here and two 11 O's here. So all we need are two 8 O's. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick up an 8 O onto our thread, drop it down, and then we're going to pick up this side of the bracelet and making sure you have it without twists and you're going, you have it face up, you're going to go into the two 11 O's on this side. So let me get you a little closer. So right here, you're just going to go through these two 8 O's, or 11 O's, excuse me. You have an 8 O on your thread. As you do this, your bracelet can twist, so just pick it up in between your fingers like this and pull that 8 O down. Let me move this little tail out of my way a little bit. And then pick up another 8 O right here. And then just go into the two 11 O's you started in on the opposite side just like this. Bring your bracelet between your thumb and your fingers just like this and pull your thread through. That ensures everything is the way it's supposed to be. Now we have a unit right there that we can put a crystal on. First we're going to sew through it because this is our connection so we're going to sew all the way around it. So I'm coming out of these two 11 O's right here. I'm going to go into this 8 O pull my thread through. I'm going to go into the two 11 O's here and pull my thread through. And then I'm going to go into the 8 O on this side and pull my thread through. And then up into these two 11 O's here. Now if you'd like to, you can do that again. But no, the more you sew through this, the more difficult it may be to travel through. I'm going to get rid of this tail, making sure nothing else is in the way. I'm just going to burn it down, make sure it doesn't go in any of my beads. So I'm pushing it kind of away. It can go, it can be up against that 15-0, but I don't want it to block my 8-0 there at all. Now, I'm coming out of this 8-0 seed bead right here. I'm going to pick up a 15-0 seed bead. I'm going to pick up a crystal and a 15-0 seed bead, and I'll show you, just like this. And I am going to go into the opposite side of, am I coming out of the 11-0s? No. Yeah. So I'm coming out of the 11 O's. I need to come out of the 8 -0. So I'm going to go into this 8 -0 first.
right there. And let me back off a little so I don't get out of frame and people start yelling at me and all kinds of beautiful things. All right, so now I'm coming out of the 8 -0. And then I'm going to pick up a 15-0 and my crystal and a 15-0. And then I will go, let's get close again. So let's go into the same side of the 8-0. We're coming out of the opposite one. So coming out here, I'm going to go in on this side. And pull this down. And then I will pick up a 15-0, go into the crystal here. I'm going to put my thumb over the crystal and pull my thread through. And tighten that. And then I'm going to pick up another 15-0. I'm going to turn it this way so that I can see my 8-0 a little better. And I'm going to go into the opposite side of the 8-0 from which I started connecting here. It's kind of tipped, so let me get in there, right there, and pull this down, and pull tight. Now I'm going to go down into these two 11 O's again, just so I can start my next embellishment, which will pull all of this together and make it a bangle. I'm going to start it on the opposite side to make sure everything's very secure. Now, I'm going to pop up into this 80 seed bead. So I'm coming out of these two 11 O's right here between the units. I'm coming out of the two 11 O's. I'm going to go into this 80 here. And then I'm just going to start picking up 11 O's and putting them between each of the um, 80 O's. Now, you may want to cut your measurement just a little bit longer. I did do that and I forgot to mention just a little bit longer than you might normally cut it to make sure that when we cinch this together it's still going to fit around your hand. So give yourself maybe about a half inch, quarter inch, half inch more of your measurement. And then let's go into each bead here. And then into the next one. So I'm picking up an 11 0 and I'm going from 8 0 to 8 0. Oops, let's let that clear up. Focus, focus. There we go. And so I'm going from this 8 0 to this 8 0. Make sure your bracelet doesn't twist and you start sewing through the opposite side. You don't want to do that. You just want to go through. Each 8 on this side, putting an 11 in between them, just like this. And you can see how that finishes it off and kind of cinches it together a little bit. Now, it's not cinching it a ton, so if you didn't leave a lot of room because I didn't tell you in the beginning, don't worry about it too much. Just pull them in. And it looks to me like I have a gold seed bead in there, so I'm going to pull this out off camera and I'm going to continue putting it all the way around until I come back to the place where I started. So just between each 80 you're going to place an 110 seed bead all the way around your bracelet and we'll be back. Okay, so I have gone all the way around. I just have to put in my last bead and then we'll cross over and do the other side. But you can see how it's already pulling into the shape of a bangle. So what we're going to do is Let's get close again. As you can see, I need to put one more 11 0 seed bead here. So, get one that will go on my needle here. And I'm going to go from this 8 0 to this 8 0, just like I've been doing. And then I'm just going to slide through a few 11 0s and 8 0s and go a little bit further down so that I have a nice secure ending here. I'm going to give it a nice tug, and then between these beads here, you can see my two 11 O's that were in my original units. I am coming out of this 8 O. The 11 O here that I just put in, I'm going to ignore. I'm going to go into these two 11 O's between the two units. You can turn it over so you can make sure you're going through them, and then pull through. 
And now I can begin by going into the 80, closest to where my needle is, my thread is coming out. Go into that 80, back up just a little, and then I can begin picking up my 11 O's again and sliding between each 80 on this side of the bracelet. So I'm coming out of an 80, I've got an 11 O on my needle. I'm going to go into the next 80 and I'm just going to pull this down. And I'm going to continue doing that all the way around. When we get all the way around, we'll come back and tie off our thread and see how everything comes together. Okay, so now you can see it's turning into more of a bangle shape all the time here. So all I have to do is put in my last 11 L and tie it off and we'll see how it looks on the wrist. So let's get a little closer here. And here is my last 11 0 going to go into this 80 and I will slide up into several beads here until I just S exit somewhere random just like this pull this 11 0 into place <clears throat> now just kind of smooth everything out because it'll get kind of crumply looking if you have too much tension but you want decent tension otherwise it won't cup like a bangle either so now I'm coming out of this 80 right here. I'm going to go into the two 11 0 seed beads here, right between that unit there that I'm coming out of. Pull through. Now I might need to pull through like this. It's a little tight. Okay, I'm going to back out because those two seem to be really tight. So, I'm going to go into another 11-0 and 8 -0, And I'm just leaving this in here so you can see how I'm solving this issue here. And if we can't go through the middle ones, if they're pulled together too tight now, then what we will do is we'll just tie off on the outside. So, I'm going through a couple more until I come out of an 80, and then I'm going to try to go into the two 11 O's between there and see if I can go through. And this one I can. So, it may have just been one that I had one of my extension knots in or something like that. So, I'm just pulling through, and then I'm going to grab the thread bridge right between this 11 0 and 8 0 right here and I'm just going to tie a knot make sure that my knot goes down and my threads go down between those two beads like that and then I can go into a couple more beads so I'll just go into a couple more I'll go into one 8 0 here and then I can go up into these two here, two 11 O's. This might be the one that I tried to get away from. Nope. Pull this through and tie another knot. And you can just continue going around into an 8 0 and then between two beads tie a knot. You can do that as many times as you want. I'm just going to, for the sake of the video, go through a few beads on top here. And because my bangle is so big, that's why I don't make bangles normally, because mine is so big, it looks kind of floppy and funny. If you have a smaller hand, it'll work out better for you. But mine is big. I had to go about nine inches just to get around my hand. Let's see if I can get it on. Yeah, it slides right on. Show you what it looks like on my wrist. It's actually really pretty. It's just that I have such a big hand. It makes for a really big bangle. So 
for me, and see, and then it just falls down my hand because of that. But for me, I would make the stitch and just go ahead and put a clasp on it. And you could always sew back through with the 11 O's and make it closed looking like this if you'd like. And that would still give it an, a bangle look. But that way I could eliminate a lot of this excess. But this turns out really pretty. It looks really pretty on the hand. And this would be really pretty if you did like red and green for Christmas. That would be really pretty. Or you could just do whatever color you like and make a bunch of them and stack them together. They turn out really nice. They look really good on. And I think that they're fun to make. They're really easy to make. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.